Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. In about 9 hours, 23 minutes, we will be having the Performance Ford event available to us. This is an event including 100 races, 5 different cars, lots of different challenges with a large amount of relay races. And what does it get us at the end? Well, it get us the right to purchase a legendary car that is currently unavailable to us, and that is the Ford GT40 MK2. Interestingly, Natural Motion already put a GT40 showdown for the leaderboard. Well, since none of us have even gotten the car yet, and then assuming we get the right to get the car, we get the car and then it has to be restored, this leaderboard will be very interesting. I wonder if the top will be held by a bunch of guys with full stage sixes and fully restored cars. I would be interested to know how quickly they were able to get the car done and, you know, how easy it was able to get the stage sixes. So, regardless, this will be an interesting leaderboard simply because it will either be done by a bunch of cars at stage five with fusions and no. Uh, tuning whatsoever because they're not restored or you're going to have a few guys who have magically restored cars that are uh, fully upgraded and fully built so we'll see how that goes but let's talk a little bit about this particular event and what you're likely to be facing as some of the challenges first things first relay races at some point it starts to have relay races right from the get-go uh, which doesn't really make sense to me because you're not going to be able to really relay uh, since you haven't locked in the second car yet. But hey, it is what it is. So relay races will be there. Speed traps always there. That's the kind of thing that you'll see a lot of. But if you notice, the speed trap and the sprints are really not that many. It's really the relay races that's going to dominate this event. Um, what that tells me is that if they're going to put relay races in before you're really even advancing into the second third fourth five car you're gonna have to have all five cars more or less ready to go from the get-go because i don't think these relay races are just going to be one car to two car for long they're going to probably jump one two three four pretty quickly by the time you get past say race 50 you may very well be looking at relay races with five cars and relay races are happening almost every five races. Look at this. 53, there's a relay. 56, I mean, every three races, there's a relay. That means all your cars that you're going to be using in this event will have to be somewhat upgraded, if not fully upgraded, and ready to go. Just how challenging can this event be? Well, that's a good question because from what I understand, you're allowed to play this over and over again until you complete it meaning the event is not a one-time deal it's going to come back uh, maybe seasonal maybe some other way to allow you to continue to do it or it will have no ending time once you unlock it and it just kind of sticks around until you finish it if we are given that kind of time my suspicion is it's going to cost us some time to get this thing done um, and the only way they can make it that challenging is if they make it hard to beat the relays. So we will see. I am not particularly optimistic this will be super easy. Of course, it could turn out to be super easy for uh, veteran players who have all these cars ready to go. Uh, but for newer players, uh, don't be surprised if you get stuck somewhere along the way. Again, no specific information is given yet, but we'll all start finding out about this uh, by tomorrow. And as is as usual, uh, as soon as it's available, somebody will go and beat all 100 races really fast and post up some screenshots. So I'm looking forward to getting that information and finding out whether my speculation will come true or be proven false. Okay, now let's go look at these cars that are going to be used for this event. One of the first cars you'll get to use uh, will be the Mustang Boss 302. There is a no star version and there is a one star version. The one star you tend to get from key poles, uh, bronze keys can even drop them, but you have to get them from rare imports. The no star you could just buy. 
they're not really that far off from each other, so I don't anticipate it being super difficult to upgrade either one of these, put fusions in it, and get somewhere in the cup. The way this car works is that it is, you know, like most of the legendary cars, they're not that hard to drive, but they tend to be wheel spinners. So you're really using nitrous a little bit later in second or third gear. The positive side is they also generally have pretty high top speed, so your speed trap shouldn't be much of an issue, although sprints might be a lot more difficult if they force you to go do a sprint with this car. So as you can see, sprint-wise, this car is super slow, but top speed-wise for a Tier 1, it's actually pretty decent. So we'll have to see what the challenges are, but I doubt you're going to have a lot of a problem uh, with Mustang 302 challenges. I doubt that natural motion will make it too hard right from the get-go. So knowing that, um, this car shouldn't be all that bad. The Ford S F-150 SVT Raptor is the next one that is in the list for the five cars you need to use. The problem with this Ford doesn't lie in the fact that it is a Tier 2 or the fact that it's an SUV. The problem with this Ford is that unless you've been around a while, there's a good chance you don't have this thing anywhere near max with Stage 6s. That doesn't mean that it's impossible to get Stage 6s for it or anything like that. It just means that you might be burning up some bronze keys if you want to build this quickly. If you've had this truck for a while, or you had it back in the day when it was a PC Cup uh, vehicle, oh, the nightmares of that. 50 races with this slow truck back in those days um, was quite the grind. But in that situation, you may have the truck more or less fully upgraded. Much like the Boss 302, this truck is pretty good with acceleration to top speed. In fact, you can easily hit over 150 miles per hour with it. But again, it's a little weak initially on the acceleration. Not to say it's going to be terrible. You could probably tune it around it. But again, another tricky vehicle to think about. And it may or may not be easy to get somewhere with this truck. Uh, Time-wise, it's not anywhere off from your typical uh, tier 2s, but it's definitely on the slow side of tier 2 vehicles. Again, and that's assuming it's fully maxed, and depending on how tough the challenges are, this may or may not be a frustrating uh, vehicle to deal with during this particular cup. Number 3 on the list, we have Mustang GT Premium. This is a very underrated car all around in tier 3. This uh, little Mustang here with the stars actually can get you through the whole span of Tempest from 1 to 3 in Tier 3. Overall, a good vehicle. Um, it's interesting with this vehicle in that, again, it is a very much a grippy vehicle that doesn't require the grip to do what it needs to do. You can put it at a very high grip and still accomplish a uh, good 0 to 60 as well as a decent quarter mile both runtime and mile per hour. Unlike the Tier 2 uh, Ford truck, this one you can actually get Stage 6s from buying Mustangs in the dealership, stripping them. The other thing is that this uh, Mustang from the dealership, if bought and stripped, is a good source of uh, epic fusions and uh, rare and uncommon fusions as well. Plus, you could max out this two-star Mustang utilizing uh, the parts from that. Uh, two stars are generally a little bit faster than the no star, but it's not going to be so far off that you cannot just buy a Mustang to get through the Ford Performance event. So this is, again, one of the easier choices out of the batch that you'll be facing. Next in line, we have the Shelby GT350R. The good news is this car has been PC Cup car more than once. In fact, it's been that at least two, three times. The bad news is that it's otherwise a rather rare car to pull from keys, and parts are extremely rare as well. Again, veteran players who's been around more than a year or two probably have, you know, maybe more than one of these guys already in their garage, or has at least one that they've pretty much built uh, close to max through the PC Cups. 
The downside is, of course, if you had to get this car now and start upgrading it, uh, you may be stuck quite a while with the Stage 6s. It's also kind of a poor performer uh, when it doesn't have the Stage 6s, which can make things quite difficult for you if you're starting off with this car fresh, trying to do some challenges like the speed traps as well as the sprints. In the relay, if this car is not fully upgraded or is upgraded too little, it may in fact be one of your weak links uh, that's going to make things handicapped because being a Tier 4 is supposed to do something, uh, but Really, it's not that quick a vehicle, even fully maxed. And without the Stage 6s, this could drop to the 14-second range, and that could put you in a particularly difficult position uh, when you're trying to finish something like a relay that is actually more challenging. So this is one of the ones I have some concerns about for players that don't have it built, just like I do for the SVT Raptor. These two are definitely question marks in my mind for people who are newer and you know, could be a uh, sticking point for you to get through the cup. And unfortunately, we won't know until everybody really starts to get deep into the cup. So here is another car that is harder to get and possibly difficult to work with. And last but not least, the Ford GT itself. There's a Heritage Edition that is mentioned by Natural Motion. You can find it in uh, the dealership, and you should be able to purchase it for in-game cash as well. Bottom line is, the Ford GT should also work. It's really the same car. The Heritage Edition is nothing more than having some kind of nice livery on it. Uh, the performance should be that much different. The Ford GT is not a bad car, but it is also not one of the faster cars overall. Um, as a Tier 5, most people look down on it because it doesn't have the highest uh, and fastest times uh, when you're fully built. Uh, but it is certainly not a bad vehicle, and it is, in fact, rather easy to tune to use uh, for live and can actually beat Dino and do uh, pretty well in the 10-second to 9-second lobbies. Uh, Foley Max, it runs about an 8 point, I believe 8.9 with a really good driver. Uh, but again, as you can see, it can be tuned to adjust for time. And with certain adjustments, it can also be tuned to be rather dangerous and live. I like this car. I've always uh, pretty much enjoyed using it. I'm looking forward to it being used in this cup. Uh, however, in the long run, uh, the Ford GT hasn't been too much of a go-to car for many players. Uh, it looks nice, but it really should be quicker. It's kind of underrepresented, in my opinion, and uh, hopefully that'll get remedied in the future with some kind of buff. But as it sits now, this is kind of a middle-of-the-pack Tier 5. Um, and not really quick enough to be a go-to car for Tempest 3, although it could easily uh, take care of Tempest 2 uh, when it's maxed out or is close to maxed out. Again, 8.9s nowadays for a Tier 5 really isn't that impressive. So we'll see what happens with this. I doubt the Heritage is much faster uh, since it's really more or less a livery thing rather than a completely different car, but we can hope that it would be a little bit better than the regular GT, and we'll find out soon enough as people build and max it out. And now that brings us to our final car uh, that we're actually unlocking through the Performance Ford event, which would be this GT40 MK2. Uh, again, this is a legendary car that's going to be required to be restored before you can do anything like tuning uh, but hopefully it'll turn out to be a good car. However, that being said, it is a Tier 4, not a Tier 5. So don't expect it to do much better against uh, Tier 5 cars than your typical good Tier 4s like the NSX, LB NSX, and some of the others. Uh, from my understanding, this is a decently fast Tier 4 and will fall in the uh, top part of Tier 4 as far as performance is concerned. Although I would have to verify that information in the future. Bottom line is... Unless you've been really lucky, you probably don't even have a stage six for this car yet, you're going to not be able to tune it until it's fully restored, which could easily take two months if you're not spending gold and money uh, to accelerate the process. So while I look forward to unlocking it, understand that this 
Ford Performance uh, event really isn't something that you must get done within an hour when it becomes available. Something to do over time. And that's what I plan to do. I'm going to kind of slow play it if it allows me to. And if it ends pretty quickly, I do have my cars ready to get it done. Well, that kind of ends the discussion of this cup. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow more information. And I may start doing some follow-ups on uh, various settings as far as if people run into problems with certain speed traps or certain sprints uh, or relays. But the general rule with this game never changes. You need enough upgrades to get stuff done. And if you don't have enough fusions or upgrades, you may get stuck somewhere. Tuning can only do so much, assuming you have the parts to do it. Well, I hope you won't have a difficult time with this uh, Ford Performance Cup. Let me know what your experience is once we all get into this tomorrow. And uh, feel free to leave comments and let me know what you think. If you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel so that in the future, whenever I put up videos on anything, you'll get a notification and you can check them out. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.